Welcome to Surfing Stuff. My name is Carl Coates and I want to introduce a new series to you today. This series is, is titled Great Surfing Characters and in episode one today we're going to be interviewing Anthony Brodovich from Surf Action Margate, former, uh, 19, uh, former world amateur surfing champion. Anthony won that title at Nahoon Reef in 1978 and um, what an awesome interview it was. Uh, please sit back and enjoy it. We would love to hear from you in the comment box after you've listened. And if you've not yet done so, please subscribe to this channel and press the bell so you can be notified of further episodes to come out. Enjoy it and uh, you have a fantastic day. Cheers. Um, okay, and uh, firstly, uh, welcome and thank you to, to uh, uh, thank you for joining this, this podcast on this channel, Surfing Stuff. Um, Hey, it's so lucky to see you, Ant, and it's lucky to have you on here on this first episode. Shot, bro. Thank you. Hey, Carl, can I sponsor you a beer trip? A beer. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll give you my bank details afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Carl, it's a pleasure. It's nice to be uh, on your podcast, and um, yeah, all the best for the future. No, lucky. Hey, Ant, we got uh, um, we got a, a limited amount of time here, so let's jump straight into it. Uh, you know, there's a th this this podcast is is called Great Surfing Characters, and in South Africa, in fact, globally, you are one of them. Um, uh, and just a couple of questions that I want to put to you to for you to think about and to answer back. You know, just uh, I, I think what a wonderful opportunity. First question. Your home break as a youngster, where was that exactly? And and who were the characters that were around in those at, at that time, Ant? Okay, well, uh, not a lot of people know this, but um, I started surfing um, at, a, at a beach, which is not a popular surfing beach at all. Um, it was probably about three kilometers south of Port Jefferson, a place called Oslo Beach. Um, and as I got a while progressed, um, I started to venture out to other breaks. People call it Saints, which actually it's called St. Mike's. It's called St. Michael's on Sea. That's the correct name. And there was a there was a number of uh, colourful characters, but the main guy in those days was a guy, and he was the hero. He was a, a ginger ninja. <laughs> he was his name was Jimmy Miller, and he came from a surfing family um, that used to live um, just slightly north of St. Mike's. Um, his brother, uh, Ian Miller, was a goofy foot. Jimmy was a, uh, a regular foot. But he was king of that point. Let me tell you right now. They used to have um, these competitions when we were grants. And whoever won the competition, first prize, you could ride Jimmy's surfboard. No way. And the folks used to be so stoked. Uh, yeah, and it was incredible because there were a lot of characters that made up the surf scene at St. Mike's. You know, there was Jimmy Miller, there was the late Andy Silverman. His father used to own the um, surf bay, or sorry, the Kingfisher Caravan Park, uh, just slightly north of the bridge, St. Mike's. There was um, Peter Dean, um, Ian Moffat. Uh, the Saddington brothers, Ken, John, and David. Um, yeah, there were just all these guys. And we used to have this like clubhouse just adjacent to the, uh, the tea room there called the Tropicana tea room uh, back in the day. Um, it's now, of course, Sea Bali, but Sea Bali is a new building. But we used to have this clubhouse. It was almost like a store. And we used to stash all our boards there. And it was incredible. Eh? It was like, 
Yeah, you know, we used to get initiated. We used to have to run this um, this initiation, uh, call it passage, if you would like. And these the older oaks would stand there with these flippers, and they used to brown their backsides bloody blue. <laughs> sods. Yes, but karma catches them. <laughs> yes, he and. Um, Yo, I'm sure you must have seen a lot of change at St. Mike's over the years with obviously the infrastructure there um, and, the, and the characters, the lineup. I mean, just coming to mind immediately is the late Fricky van der Berg. I mean, Fricky, um, he must have been there from the beginning ish, but uh, the character, the faces must have changed a lot over the years too. Did you experience a lot of that, Ant? <clears throat> Carl, it's, 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 um, like any break, as the years roll by, things change. Yeah. Faces change. You know, um, the, 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 the faces now, it's a complete metamorphosis because you're talking some um, almost 60 years ago. And mm. a, a, a lot of waves have broken mm. since then. You know, I mean, you had people like Fricky and Hazel, which were sort of part of the, the furniture, so to speak. Uh, but they only came kind of later because Fricky and Hazel used to work in Durban. Fricky used to his apprenticeship in Durban. And Hazel was doing, I think, a, a hairdresser... Uh, apprenticeship and then they moved down you know but there were lots of I mean there were lots of characters you know my brother Mark um, he you know he had his crew you know well, we used to hang out with different crews mm. um, you know there were the Evan Finnicombs there were the the David Saddingtons the you know we were the younger crew the Vincent Eels Peter Eels his nickname was Weasel there was John Orsman. Everybody had nicknames. This John Orsman's nickname was Rat. Okay. How he got that nickname, I still to this day <laughs> do not know. But it was funny anyway. Yeah, so to say that the, yes, the faces have changed in the lineup, there's not many guys, if I panel out there, there's not many guys that I notice. Yeah, see, man. And. The next, the next thing I got written down here is your first trip to Hawaii. What year was that, and uh, was it a solo mission trip, or were you with a were you with the Bok? Were you were you a Bok in those days, Springbok? Or yeah, just a little bit about your first trip to Hawaii. Your thoughts surrounding it. Um, yeah, love to hear about that. Eh? Your Hawaii. Yeah, it was it was in 1971 um, they used to alternate between the, the, the Gunson 500 or the Durban 500 it was originally the Durban 500 and then it became the Gunson 500 because Gunson cigarettes um, and I think they're still going um, they stepped up and they sponsored the 500 bucks because that's how I got the 500 bucks was first place. Okay. That's how I got the name 500. Um, they were held, the Gunston was held in 1971 at Eastern Beach in East London. Um, I got a third in the final. I was beaten by the US champion, which was Brad McCall. Okay. And um, a South African surfer now residing in Australia, a very good natural footer. His name was Jeremy Yates. I don't know where Sean and Michael were. I think maybe Sean was in Hawaii. No, no, it couldn't have been Sean. Couldn't have been in Hawaii because he was. It was in July, so I don't know where Sean was, but I don't recall seeing him or Michael Johnson. But anyway. Um, so I got a third there, and then what happened was that same year in 1971, um, uh, SASA, which was South African Surfing Association, 
uh, sponsored three surfers, um, namely Randy Rarick, the Hawaiian surfing champion, Peter Druin, the Australian surfing champion, and the US surfing champion, which was Brad McCall, to come out to South Africa and do a tour of South Africa and go and spend time in each region where the various associations like Natal Surf Riders, Southern Natal Surf Riders, would host these guys for a period of time, purely to uplift the surfing in that area. So wow. people could watch these greats, uh, the people that you've read, around the mag read about in the magazines, and you could see these guys surfing, which would, the mission was to uh, improve the standard of surfing in South Africa. Anyway, um, Randy went back to Hawaii and he had a meeting with um, the, 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 the biggest contest then was uh, a contest called the Smirnoff Pro-Am. And that was held kind of late November, early December um, at Sunset Beach. You know, there's various uh, um, wave heights that have to be adhered to. So as a 15-year-old and going over to Hawaii, to, you know, I was invited to... Uh, compete in the, in the Smirnoff Pro-Am, which later became the Jose Cuervo at the Tiba Company. Um, and uh, we went, I got invited over in 1971, along with Sean Thompson, Michael Thompson, and Gavin Rudolph. We all traveled together. Um, and it was nice, I knew, I knew Sean and Michael prior to that because my father uh, and Sean's father Ernie, they became big tanners as well. So, you know, so I, 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 I knew Sean and Michael, um, and I didn't really know, get, know Gavin, but, uh, you know, you get to know guys when you're on a trip. And we were over here, you know, we went there, I mean, landing on the rock was, it was almost, it was almost like a religious experience because it was, Surfing was, that was the place where you had to, if you hadn't been to Hawaii, you wouldn't count it, because that's simple. And it was there that was the proving ground. I must say it was very daunting, um, especially as a kid. But Randy made us some boards, he made all of us boards. Uh, Gavin, myself, uh, Sean and Michael. And we stayed at a place called the Menahuni village, which is just north up the road of Kaina Point in Haleiwa. Um, sorry, it's towards Kaina Point, but it's just maybe in those days half a mile up north from Haleiwa. So, yeah, it was Hawaii, you know, we, we came back. Um, we came back just before Christmas in December, and I never forget. I bought Michael Thompson's yellow Holmes gut made for him by Daryl Holmes. That was one of my best boards I've ever had. It was an incredible board. But anyway, yeah, that was Hawaii. You know, Hawaii was great. Um, you learn a lot because there's so many good surfers in Hawaii, and those waves, as Randy Rarick said, the waves in Hawaii because of the the geographical setup and the reefs and the situation of, Oahu, of Oahu, uh in that in that whole sort of setup. The waves in Hawaii, according to Randy Rarick, are four times more powerful than the waves in South Africa. Wow. So that gives you some idea um, just how powerful the waves are in Hawaii. You know, hence all the 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 wipeouts that have consequences in Hawaii, i.e. pipeline, you can mm. see. Yeah, absolutely. So that was Hawaii for us, you know. Yes, man. Um, and then you, you're talking about uh, uh, those big names, Sean and Michael and all that. And could you take a moment and walk us through your 1978 world title win at Nahoon? Who, who was in the Springbok team there? 
Um, and, and just, I, I know as a youngster, when I work for you in the shop, we've chatted about this before, but for the audience that are watching in here, just, could you just, if, uh, uh, not in full detail, but just, can you walk us through the, through that, that, that period? Uh, yeah, that's uh, always captured my mind today. Okay, so like 1978, we had to surf a trial because directly after my brother, yeah. Mark, just won SA Champs. I never forget the quote in the Zig Zag magazine. And the, the title of that article was called Mark's Rainy Day Massacre. Wow. He destroyed all of us in the final. We, he was so far ahead, we needed a, a telescope to see how he was. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so they, they had a trial directly after that um, at Nahoon because that was the, 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 the scheduled um, place. Uh, or spot that was going to hold the seventh world surfing championships, which, by the way, had just been resurrected by Basil Lomberg, who was the, I think he was the president of the the ISA, International Surfing Association, because the last time there was a world contest was in 1972, which myself, Sean, Michael, Mike Esposito, Mike Lamont, Jonathan Palmer and Hans Eady was there. John and, 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 and his wife, John Whitmore. Uh, the last time there was a World Surfing Contest hosted by the ISA was in 1972 in San Diego, which was won by Jimmy Blairs. I thought David Nueva should have won that. But anyway, that was me. Um, and there was no World Contest 1974. 1976 and Basil Lombard, not only was the was he the the main uh, uh, danger for not danger but this he saw um, he was also the the, 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 the the main person who took over from John Whitmore in South Africa and he was the president of the South African Surfing Association. We, anyway, we had the trials and the people that made the team. Uh, first seed was Bruce Jackson. Second seed was myself. Third seed was Wayne Shaw. Fourth seed was Piers Pittard. I mean, Piers was an incredible surfer. He, you know, his credentials, you know, and his surfing of supers is just still something else. Um, there was Arthur Cowan and Dave Hansen from East London, the late Dave Hansen. Um, and I never forget Basil said to us, I want you guys to be down there at least 10 days before the event. I need to win this event. And yes, um, it was held at Nahoon Reef. Um, and because we also had a two week waiting period, that was also very cool because they picked days where the waves were really on. So eventually, it, Bruce Jackson was the guy that was the hot tip favorite. Okay. I ever got out another plan. And our plans and God plan and God's plans are sometimes they're not running <laughs> parallel with each other. So and then in the final, I never forget it, it was a it was a July morning. Right you right hit the band wrote a song called July Morning. And we paddled the final consistent of myself, Bruce Jackson, Pierce Patard, uh, Wayne Shaw, Steve Colton, and Joey Buran. Uh, well, uh, Steve and Joey were uh, 
from the States. They had made it, that were representing the American team. And we paddled out in perfect accurate, six to eight feet, light offshores, gracing the stadium of the Hill Reef. And when I mean call, it was prima. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever seen a hoon like that. Wow. <clears throat> to cut a long story short, we paddled out, all six of us. We, the, the, in fact, they built the, the, the East London Town Council built. There's a walkway at the hood, a concrete walkway. That was built especially for the surface so we wouldn't injure ourselves walking out or navigating our way out to the, the out to the point <laughs> and i'll never forget as the hooter it was a 45 minute final it was a 45 minute final and the normal in a normal heat it was your best three ways to count out of 20 points it's changed now it's out of 10 and for the final it was your best five ways to count mm. in 45 minutes well i'll tell you something for another the huta went <laughs> and there was this this madra <laughs> of, a, of a wave and I just turned and went no one it was when I hit the water it was like it was almost it was again like an experience that I've never experienced before Every, you know there's all like a people announcing this and that and there's music blaring and there's a commentator talking but when I hit that water everything just went silent it just went silent Anyway, we, I took off on this wave, and it was an absolute bomb. And I rode it right the way down to, I think they call it, just before Mermaid's Pool. And I took paddle from Mermaid's Pool back out to the lineup at the hood. Well, the cities didn't help. But... <laughs> Hey, I paddled out, and I never forget for 45 minutes, I caught a total of seven waves. Wow, okay. Uh, and I never stopped paddling once. Not once. And I saw Bruce on a couple. I saw Wayne on a couple. I saw Pitt on a couple, Joey Buran on a couple, and so did Steve get a couple. It was a guy was smoking it. it. The guys, I mean, it was, the standard was hard. It was a world, it was the Ice Age World Surfing Championships event. But it was, it, it was, it was half of the course that it, it, it was loaded with four South Africans because it was we knew, we knew the place. Mm. And I never forget, I, um, the hotel sounded and I was, I just caught a wave. And I'd been sure, and as I was, I was about to turn around, no watches in those days, eh? Mm. When I say no watches, surfing watches weren't really used. No countdown timers and things like that. And you had to listen. The, the commentator used to say, well, there's 10 minutes left. You know, but I caught my last wave, my seventh wave. And the Hooter went. And I was right near where I pedaled in. And I pedaled in and it was, I mean, it was crowded, eh? Because you must remember that the, 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 the Gunston 500 that year was, in 97, was being held at East London because they used to alternate. They used to alternate between Durban, one year Durban, one year East London. One year Durban, one year East London. It was purely, I think, a marketing strategy on their behalf. However, I came out the water and um, the first person on that walkway was Hansi. And he said, he came up to me and he, 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 I could see the emotion in his eyes. And he was, 
He said to me, you've won. And I said, hey, Hansi, in fact, there's a photograph. Um, I'll try and find it and send it to you. But there's a photograph of Hansi looking like this and saying, hey, you won. And then Basil came down from the tower and he said, hey, and you've won. No ways. Wow. And that was, yeah, that was like a really, you know, it was a pivotal sort of time. But in, when you caught in the moment like that, it doesn't really, it doesn't really sink in. Okay. Um, and it took a while, you know, yeah. But yeah, that was 78. She was. And then, and, and, and a, 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 a question that kind of stems off of that. Life after that win, for example, did you get an opportunity? Where where was the next ISA uh, World Amateur Championships? Where, where was that? And did you go and defend? I think you once told me. I can't remember exactly what what what, what happened there. And then and then the fame from winning how, how, in South Africa at the time. How how was it? Well, okay. Let's let's just break this down. So, the ISA 8th World Surfing Contest or event was held in France. The French Surfing Federation invited me to come and defend my title. However, I was told that the French government would not grant me a visa for me to go <laughs> into France, which was far for the course. But unfortunately, because of the political situation in South Africa at that time, um, and I it was wrong, um, there were a lot of sports embargoes um, against South Africa, so I didn't even bother. But I was told, in no uncertain terms, don't apply for a visa, you're not going to get it. Um, South Africa wasn't even invited to attend that event because no one was going to get a visa. However, hmm. in saying that and getting to your second question, um, <coughs> What is fame? I think it's a crock. Mm. I think it's there's certain is a certain degree of recognition, both good and bad, that you get from winning an event like that. I must say that same year we all went back to Hawaii, my brother included. Um in fact, that trip to Hawaii was myself, my brother Mark, Chen Signelli, Spider Murphy, and Barry Campbell. Oh, Barry Campbell, eh? You're the cool guy, old Barry. I dig Barry, yeah. And, 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 and Bruce Jackson was, and I think he came, but he came later. Yeah, yeah. But it, yeah, it was a good, good trip to Hawaii. But getting back to the question, the question... Hey, there were sponsors. That was the first time, but well, not the first time, but the first, that was part of the, the sponsorship and surfing. People, there were certain companies and surfwear brands <coughs> that could identify with surfing being a marketable, <coughs> sorry, a marketable commodity. And yeah, and it, yeah, that's. I remember in 1978 the national team. Well, the Springbok team was um, was sponsored by Jockey Sportswear. Those funny baggies with a little. They were short baggies. Mm. Mm -hmm. They were, um, and they had those scallop legs. Okay. Wow. Like, look, yeah, those they sponsored the national team. Okay. Um. And then it started becoming more and more, yeah, a lot more people. You know, you, you also saw 
the emergence of labels like Quicksilver, uh, Bullabong, Instinct. Um, yeah, some big labels started to emerge in that period. Okay. Um, and yeah, surfing went from peace, love, love, and happiness to Main Street. So, uh, it became an industry. So and so after you so let, so so in seventy eight in July you you win it you win it Nahoon, the amateur title later that year you go to the North Shore you there so so um so did people recognise did they go hey there's Ant there's there's the amateur champ no no a lot of yeah. people came up and congratulated us congratulated me um yeah but you know the, you must understand that the that, that at that time there was a um, there was a, uh, 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 there was a split between amateur and professional. Okay. I won, the ISA was an amateur event. Okay. It was an amateur organization. Then there was the, 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 the ASP, Association of Surfing Professionals. Um, or was it the International Surfing Professionals, which was started, I think, in 1975. Um, that was when the split came. In Cairns was uh, Peter Townsend, the, the Bronze Aussies, Jimmy Banks, Shane Aran, um, Sean Thompson, uh, Mark Richards, and all those guys were very uh, bugs. Uh, Robert Bartholomew, they were very instrumental in setting up the, 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 the professional thing. So... In terms of mainstream recognition, no. You know, there was a couple of people that knew that I was on it. But the, 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 the professional route was the way to go because that's where the money was. Yeah, sure. Um, and there was also a rule that if you accepted money, you immediately become a professional, you lose your amateur status. Okay. And, and amateurs and uh, 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 professionals were not allowed to compete in amateur contests. Well, I see. So, yeah, things have changed then. Yeah, so, so, so I went and I competed in, um, it was in the Jose Cuervo, which took over from the Smirnoff. As I said, that was, they took over from the Smirnoff. And yeah, that was, that year was, that 1978 year was quite, actually I forgot something very important. So, Hey, both Bruce Jackson and myself, we made the semi-finals. At sunset, it's probably a sort of 12 feet. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. And at sunset, at its best. And so we got all the rest of the South African mods sitting on the beach, including Spider Murphy and Co. Anyway, Bruce and I, we're in the same semi-final. We come out the water. And Spider comes up to us and says, Oaks, let me tell you right now. First and second, the both the top spots are you two O's. You as smart as other <laughs> Now we compete here against Hawaiians and Australians and blah blah blah. And guess what? Last and second off. <laughs> back to the car park go open the beers boys and have a fun time no Jeez. exactly just back to the car park <laughs> and yeah go lick your wings and re-strategize for the next battle I was shocked and I went hey come on spider me <laughs> 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 Oh but goodness! Afterwards. Yes, yeah. and 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 just one one more quick thing. I, I see we got a very we got four minutes left before the time cuts out here. Um, in yeah. those days, if you had a problem with the judging, what could you go up to the? Could you voice your opinion then and say, "Hey guys, I mean, I, I was unfairly." Could did did you guys do things like that, or did you just accept it and move on? How, how did it work in those days? You're, you're, you have to be very careful because. There were a lot of guys who used to come out the water, water like Gabriel Medina's just come out the water and yeah. his voice publicly mm -hmm. is uh, uh, distasteful for the the, 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 the the WSL judging. Yeah, I saw that. Um, 
if you voiced your opinion and said, hey, you guys are a bunch of turkeys, no, you can do that. But don't <laughs> enter too many more contests. You. You'll wind up with Bruce and I wound up last and second last. Yes, <laughs> too funny. Hey, Ant, what, uh, um, hey, that's, thank you for sharing all that stuff. Uh, two more things. The, the the birth of South Shore Surf Club. You were the president. The, the were you? Who was it? You and Tempeg or Neil, the late Neil Kempen. Were you guys the founders of South Shore? No, there was there was a Shelly, the late Shelly Coney. Oh, okay, okay. A founding member of, of South Shore, so it was myself, Shelly Coney, Basil George, Neil Kempen, uh, and Adrian George. Okay. Sean's mom. Sean yeah, and I Dean's mom. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the, and that happened, I think, in about 1988. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah, South Shore. Yes, sir, you, you guys left a wonderful legacy there. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you've got some young blood that has taken over and they're doing a very good job as far as I'm concerned. No, lekker. And then, and lastly, yes, I wish we could have more time here. Lastly, you you are now one of the one of the only surviving independent surf shops. If somebody wants to contact you or shop at your shop, where are you located? What what's your how do people get a hold of you? We've got two minutes. Burn the two minutes out just telling us about your retail outfits, what's going on, and we'll end off with that, Ant. Okay, cool, Carl. Yeah, look uh, yeah, you know we situated in, in, in the middle of Margate. We also have another store in Ramsgate. You can get us, hold of us, um, on 0826596644 or on the landline uh, 039317360. You'll get hold of either myself or Jeremy. Um, yeah, you know, and it's, as I say, you know, I know time is a constraint here, but Margate seems to be picking up. They cleaned it up. Tidy towns have done an amazing job from this place. Okay. Wow. And cool. Yeah, you know, it's the will of God that that, that, that things improve. May God's will be done. Mm. It's Wonderful. As simple as that. Yeah. And 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 if, if like I've got a I've got a I've got a whole bunch of lattes now. I've got three of them. If they do, you offer surf lessons. We, we your, do surf lessons and we also an accredited surf school there now. We're running the moment. I'm running them in conjunction with my partner, uh, Ruth Bryson. Okay. Um, and yeah, we're running mostly out of South Brum and that area. You know, but again, we scout the beaches. Okay. Uh, we take kids from six years and older. Uh, we scout the beaches to find where the most uh, where the most suitable place is and safety. Safety. That's. That's it. Yeah. Hey, Ant, thank you. Our time, we've got about 20 seconds left. I just want to say thank you so, so much for taking time out of your day to make this happen. And, um, yeah, shot, and Thanks very, very much, hey, Bru. Shot. Paul, oh, thank you for having me on. And to all the people out there, if in doubt, pedal out. <laughs> Lekker, Ant. We'll catch up soon, Bru. Sweet. Lekker. Take care.